What's up guys, and welcome back to a very special Thanksgiving edition of Coach Sean's Kitchen. I am incredibly excited to be showing you guys how I did my Thanksgiving bird this year. And I busted out every single trick I knew in order to create the juiciest, crispiest, smokiest, most flavorful bird possible. You're not gonna wanna miss it. This is Coach Sean's Kitchen. Just a reminder guys, if you like Coach Sean's Kitchen and you wanna keep seeing videos like this, please subscribe, hit that like button, and tell a friend all about my channel. It's the best thing you can do for any YouTube channel you enjoy watching. So my Thanksgiving turkey began three days before I actually intended on cooking it. And that's because I wanted to brine it in a homemade roasted vegetable stock. Now, a brine is nothing but a salty solution that helps meat retain moisture while it cooks. I figure if I'm gonna brine it, I might as well add some flavor to the party as well. So to make my roasted vegetable stock, I started with a good base of onions, carrots, celery, and garlic into my roasting pan. Then I threw in a few of my favorite secret ingredients to create a really hearty roasted vegetable broth. So I put in a few tablespoons of tomato paste along with some nutritional yeast. And this is gonna add a whole bunch of depth of flavor to my stock. Once I mixed everything up and it was coated, I'm gonna roast it very slowly for a good two hours at 300 degrees, stirring occasionally. And as you can see, I have a great color on the outside. There's tons of flavor that we were able to introduce into our vegetables. So I'm gonna add all of those roasted vegetables to my stock pot and then I'm gonna cover it with a gallon of cold filtered water. Then I'm gonna add a few more ingredients. I'm gonna start off with some classic Thanksgiving herbs. Think thyme, sage, and rosemary. Then I'm gonna add another one of those secret ingredients I love in vegetable stock, and that is some dried shiitake mushrooms. Since this is being made with the sole purpose of flavoring a Thanksgiving turkey, I decided to add a lot of those classic Thanksgiving flavors to this brine. So I'm throwing in a cinnamon stick, star anise, juniper berries, and even some candied ginger to really round out this stock. Once this comes up to a simmer, I'm gonna let it go nice and low for an hour to really extract all that flavor. Once our vegetable stock has simmered for an hour, I'm gonna let it cool slightly and then I'm gonna run it through a strainer. Then the last thing I'm gonna do while this broth is still warm is I'm going to add in my salt and my sugar. Since this liquid is still warm, it's gonna help that salt and sugar dissolve completely into my brine. Then I'm gonna put a lid on it and I'm gonna let it cool completely overnight in my fridge. Now it's time to begin brining my turkey. I have a beautiful bird here from Butcher Box, so you know it's gonna be high quality. My friends Nate and Carmen gave it to me so that I can make this video, so thank you for that. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the neck and the giblets, and I'm gonna keep this, and I'm gonna make a stock out of this later, and that's gonna form a gravy, but that's a different video. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my fingers and I'm gonna wiggle them underneath the skin but above the meat to separate the skin from the turkey. And this is gonna allow me to do two things. First, it's gonna allow that brine to completely get around the meat of the turkey and introduce all of the flavor of that stock. Second, when I go to cook this bird, I'm gonna rub a homemade herb butter underneath the skin but above the meat. Loosening this now is just gonna make that a little bit easier later. Now that my turkey is prepped and ready to go, I'm gonna put it into my large brining container. And then I'm gonna pour in that homemade vegetable stock that smells amazing. Then I'm gonna add an equal part of water, just enough to make sure the bird is submerged. And then I'm gonna add in a few more of those classic Thanksgiving herbs. So I'm gonna throw in some black peppercorns and then a few more of those fresh herbs like thyme, rosemary, and sage. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place a bag of ice on top of my bird to weigh it down so that it stays submerged. And then I'm gonna park it in my fridge for a good 12 to 14 hours. So it's been 13 hours and my turkey is done brining. 
So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove it from this brine and then I'm going to allow the turkey to dry out uncovered in my fridge overnight. And what this is gonna do is that by allowing the skin to dry out, it's gonna help it develop a very crispy exterior when we go to cook it. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we loosen the skin of the turkey so that we could rub an herb butter underneath it right above the meat to help flavor it while it cooked. So let's go ahead and create that herb butter. So I'm gonna begin by running a few cloves of garlic over a micro planner, and then I'm gonna cut up some fresh herbs, some more of that thyme, rosemary, and sage. Then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zest one lemon, and I'm also gonna use the juice of it as well. Whenever I make an herb butter, I love what bright, fresh acidity can do to really bring herb butter to life. Once everything is mixed up, I'll taste and adjust for seasoning, and then I'm gonna roll up my butter into a nice little log. And then I'm gonna park it in the fridge overnight to really help those flavors mingle and develop. Now, without further ado, it is finally turkey day. I am ready to cook this bird. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prep my aromatics. And this is what's gonna go inside the cavity of the turkey that's really gonna help it steam and cook it and flavor it from the inside. So I'm gonna quarter up a lemon and I'm also gonna dice up an onion. In addition to that, I'm also gonna add in a cinnamon stick and some more of that thyme, sage, and rosemary. Now that all our prep is out of the way, let's bring our attention to the bird. That 24 hours really dried out the skin. I'm gonna take some of that homemade herb butter and I'm gonna start placing it underneath the skin. And the way I do this is I just put a good tablespoon or two under the skin and then I use my hand to massage it over the top and get it all across the meat. Once our bird is completely covered in butter, I'm gonna fill the cavity with all of those aromatics. And then I'm gonna tie it up just so that the whole bird sits uniformly. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a bit more of that herb butter and I'm gonna rub it all around the outside. I mean, you have homemade herb butter, you might as well use it. Finally, I'll add a little bit of freshly ground black pepper and some salt and then our turkey is ready to cook. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place my turkey in the middle of a 400 degree convection oven to allow that skin to really develop an initial crust. Once I pulled it out of the oven, I'm gonna add about a cup of turkey stock to the bottom. So now that our turkey is ready, let's go ahead and head out to our Traeger. So today I've got my Traeger grill going at 325 degrees and it's full of pecan and hickory wood. Two great pellets for cooking a Thanksgiving bird. I'm gonna put in a few of my probe thermometers into my bird so that I can watch it, but then I'm gonna let it cook for a good three to four hours. But every 45 minutes, I'm gonna come out and check on my bird and I'm gonna baste it. Now, there's a lot of conflicting people out there that says basting helps or basting doesn't help. In my opinion, if I'm gonna go outside, open my Traeger and look at it, I might as well drizzle a little bit more butter over the top. So what I'm looking for is my bird to hit an internal temperature of 160 degrees in the thickest part of the thigh. And then I'm gonna let it rest and continue to cook for a good 30 to 45 minutes after it's done. Now let's go ahead and look at our final bird. And as you can see, this is absolutely gorgeous. I feel incredibly proud being able to bring this to my Thanksgiving dinner table. So how did the turkey turn out? I literally used every tip and trick I knew in order to create a juicy, flavorful bird. And quite frankly, I still think it was just okay. And that's because whenever you're cooking a Thanksgiving dinner, you have to make a choice. Either you wanna bring a beautiful centerpiece to your dinner table, or you wanna cook the best dang turkey you possibly can. And it's very difficult to do both. If I was cooking a turkey and I wanted to maximize all of the flavor, I would probably butcher it into all of its separate parts or maybe even spatchcock it and lie the turkey flat as it cooked. But there's something magical about bringing that whole bird to a dinner table surrounded by your friends. It's just reminiscent of everything you want Thanksgiving to be. So while the turkey might not be the most flavorful when you cook it whole, there's still something magical about bringing that whole bird to your table. And as long as you have people to enjoy your bird with, it's always worth the effort. So I hope you enjoyed this special Thanksgiving edition of Coach Sean's Kitchen. And from my household to yours, I just want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving.